Okay. Hola, all. I should like to begin by apologizing first and foremost if I come across with a, a somewhat negative demeanor in this video. Uh, I, myself and our operator, everybody on the team really has had a, a real rough weekend. Some of us got sick. Some of us had money troubles. I was in a particularly delicate situation and uh, I was counting on my neighbor to help me out with something and she promised me that she was going to do it. And then, you know, like 20 minutes ago, she just screwed me over like... She basically, in, in terms of value, the values that were in play there, she basically kind of spit in my face. It was pretty offensive. It, well, somewhat offensive. It was definitely insulting. And so I apologize if I come across as having a negative demeanor in this video. I just, I do. And I didn't want to... I didn't want to break it down with the sword dancing. That's what I usually do to get rid of that sort of shit. But maybe I need to bring it into the video. Anyway, this video is going to be the first of what I presume will be many. Eventually uh, turn out to be a whole series of videos for the, for the um, Principal Dynamics series. Helping to train people in spot casting. And this one is generally to... Uh, give you an idea of what's actually happening in, in this regard. Now, it's important for spotters to realize, realize. When I say realize, I mean that as a verb, as in take this concept and make it real, make use of it. The world around you, it's constantly communicating with you. It, 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 everything that you come across in the world is talking to your brain. You may not know it. You may run across entirely unaware of it, but there, there are kind of levels to your consciousness. Uh, you know, we know that there's a subconscious in play. Um, we know, spotters know that there is a universal collective consciousness in play. That's not bullshit. In fact, it's kind of like common sense, really. It's something that we should all kind of just know and understand because it is just simple, basic, common sense, really. But most people do not think that way. They think that we are all somehow separated where while everything else in the world is totally connected, humans are somehow separated. We have this division complex in play. We, we have a kind of a mental illness, humanity itself as a whole. And, and it's, it's part of the game. It's real. It's really like the ultimate, it's a concept of the game really is this division, defeating this division. And, uh, we're going to speak to how things, this is for, uh, remember if anybody watched the, uh, the video on the last girl that I dated, uh, for the sexuality course where I told that story. Um, I, I explained that I had placed objects for specific reasons. I'm going to try and give you an idea of what these objects are telling your brain, though you are unaware of it. Firstly, the, uh, the apples, the crab apples that I found, turned out to just be kind of like actual tiny apples. And they grew pretty fast. But, uh, you know, it's only been a few days and they grew into this, this uh, bulky mamma jamma. So that's pretty cool. But the apple itself, for most people, anybody who's encountered religion, really, Christianity, I mean specifically, anybody who's encountered biblical religion at any point in their life, anybody who knows the Adam and Eve story, this apple is going to give them the inference of that. It's going to take them back to that story, which we've already explained what that story is telling your brain. There are values in play in the story itself that are speaking to your brain, that are telling you what to think. This is, this is how social programming operates. It's as simple as putting something in front of your face, and you might not understand it, but it's speaking to you. It's what we'd call subliminal messaging, or, or sub, subliminal, uh, I think that's it, subliminal messaging. But anyways, the apple is going to bring you back to that story, even though there's no reference in that story of it being the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil being an apple. It's not an apple. It's actually, we think that it's a, what's called a doom fruit. Shut the fuck up, man. I'm trying to make a video here. It, it's something that we call a doom fruit. I, I can't remember where it grows, but they people think that that's what was referenced in the Bible. I don't know why. There's really no leads in that story to tell you what that fruit might be, but for some reason we relate it to an apple. And so everybody kind of knows that this apple is that fruit from the tree, and that will bring your brain back to that story, and it will activate the triggers in that story that are placed in that story, which are communicating to your brain pretty much to be enslaved, to be apathetic. 
I mean, we, I've, we've already gone over the specific values that are in play, and I'll continue the secular theology course uh, fairly soon. But uh, what else do we have? We have uh, money, obviously coins that are in play. You come across any money that's going to bring you back to currency, which we've already discussed what currency speaks to your brain uh, earlier in the principal dynamics course. I can't remember the name of the video, but I believe it was just like a, it's one of the catalyst events. I think that it was Exhibit A, Exhibit A in the in this in this playlist. Exhibit A is what you're going to be looking for. That will just describe to you exactly what currency is saying to your brain. We have uh, photos are simple. Any kind of photos you come across is going to uh, bring your mind back to the concept of memory itself, which we're speaking to. Uh, we're, we're speaking to right now. That's the theme. For the initiative so we're going to get down to what discussing what that means uh later on i'm not going to do that right now but i mean simple things like a pen infers uh infers not not intelligence but communication it, it infers uh it's really like a form of artwork any kind of a form of artwork is going to designate expression to your brain simple just expression itself but you know we get down to uh that's the value that's in play. That's the structural value that's in play. Is expression is what the pen denotes. But um, there, there are aspects attached to that, of course. We have something like condoms. I had a fuck ton of these. And the fucking doctor, like I had told her I was going out on a date and I needed a condom. She gives me a motherfucking, like a pile of them. Condoms obviously are going to t speak to your brain on sexuality they're going to bring your brain back to thinking about sex they're going to bring your they're also going to denote protection defense and this is going to put you this this is going to tell your brain to be in defensive mode to be in protection mode regarding sex which attached to sex are all the aspects of shame and whatnot that's been attached to it by religion if religion is in play for everyone this is very important to understand religion as a catalyst event itself is affecting all of the other catalyst events religion is going to be the top chakra it's spirituality that spirituality itself religion is kind of like you could say that spirituality is the catalyst event is the actual sh chakra in play for you the psychology of humanity itself but um religion is kind of like an aspect that's attached to it it's it's it you could say that religion is like a virus that's been placed into that program so spirituality kind of gets replaced by religion but spirituality itself does not designate religion and we're going to get down to that that's that's the ultimate catalyst event that we need to deal with to clear that up there's nothing wrong with religion but there's something very wrong with how it affects everything else so i mean that's something we have to deal with i'm sorry for any religious people that are watching but religion in and of itself it's problematic it, it, it's seriously like an illness that's been placed in this this chakra of, of spirituality. It's like an aspect that's been attached to that value that is harmful. And that places you, pretty much enslaves you. That's going to be the bottom line on religion. It's designed to enslave you. It's designed to tell your brain to be a slave, to be apathetic. Um, we have things like time. The, a clock. These, these things are... Uh, going to speak to your brain on I, I i'm not sure how to express it but kind of pick up and go move fast like you're running out of time that's something that it's going to tell your brain that's an aspect you're going to get because of society uh, how society operates at this point in time the, with our job situations working taking care of business getting money to take care of people having to work your ass off having to scramble to get things done having little time that's the aspect that's going to be attached to the clock when you see it is going to be hurry up pretty much but time itself designates evolution really. the actual concept the value of time the structural value designates continuation it designates it, it, I'm, I'm not sure how to word it. It designates evolution, essentially. It designates growth. It designates movement. Uh, that's going to be the ultimate value behind it. But of course, as I said, the aspect that's attached to it is you're running out of time. And that's what the clock is always going to be telling your brain. And you, you just don't notice these things. It's something that you're, you're kind of trained by our society 
the social programming in our society to ignore these things. But, you know, there we have hearts in play. Hearts going to designate love, obviously. Hearts going to designate relationships. It's going to designate uh, emotion itself, feeling, uh, attachment, essentially. But the aspect that's attached to it is harmful. It's it's broken heart. It's you're getting involved with somebody and having a broken relationship. That's an aspect that's going to be attached to that symbol for anybody who's ever been in a bad relationship and been burnt by somebody, anybody that's been hurt in the past. You know that you see that heart and it's going to tell your brain danger, harm, broken heart sort of situation. That's what it's going to designate and and tell your brain to be thinking. You know, there's so many little values that are in play all over the place that are, are speaking to your brain. And, and when you come across it, you know, you just you don't notice it because, as I said, you're on one hand, you're kind of trained by society to ignore these things for the most part, because the, the people that are running the show, I'm sorry to say for anybody that's like, you know, jumping on conspiracy theorists and saying that you guys are all fucking crazy. It's, it's not crazy. It's actually, it's just really simple common sense, man. It's right in front of you. If you just look around, you're going to find that there's social programming in play everywhere. It, it's just, it's everywhere. This got out of control in the early 90s. Uh, do, doing, uh, in our investigation, we find that they actually started trying to use this earlier, um, as, as early as the 60s, really. Um, there's a lot of subliminal messaging you're going to find in the videos that uh, specifically we're speaking to our government and, and our situation with the government, which I'll go ahead and I'll post. Uh, maybe I'll attach it to this video in the comments or I'll go ahead and post it on the Remnants program for you guys. Um, this video that shows some of the subliminal messaging that was in play back in the 60s and it's really creepy shit. It's really, really creepy, and there's a very good chance that it's still happening. But in the early 90s, this shit got way out of control. They, they were doing actual social programming experimentation on the kids, and it just it got out. People, people, spotters who saw it and saw how it operated kind of hijacked it and started making use of it on their own. And there are various little cults and such that have grown that are using this technology. We are using this technology the initiative has taken this technology but we're we're using it to try and try and deprogram people we're trying to bring it to light we're trying to show people how this operates so that they can see through the facade see what's really happening and get out of this this conditioned uh this conditioned training this programming that's in play we want you guys we want you guys alert awake aware we want you to see what's really happening and not be disoriented and distracted by by the social programming that's in play so i mean yes there are various little cults and such that have taken this this uh technology essentially and begun to make use of it for themselves but um you know we have taken it and we are making use of it to try and show you how it operates we are not trying to program you guys uh you know in any harmful way so if if that's a thought that anybody has in their mind please toss that that's a trash idea that's an aspect that's been attached to the the value of this programming itself this programming exists everywhere you you essentially do not exist without it this programming is what makes up your personality it's what makes up who you are the, it, we are programmed the human body is a machine the brain is a computer it has programs running that identifies you there are various values that are attached to your identity, such as religion itself. If you are a religious person, you have the value of religion attached to your personal identity. You're going to have two neurons firing in your brain when religion is presented, anything having to do with your personal beliefs. The first neuron is going to be the religion itself, the belief structure that you've constructed. The second neuron is going to be your personal identity. And so you misinterpret the concept of this belief structure as being who and what you are, where in fact it is not. And so that's that's where cognitive dissonance comes from. The idea that your beliefs make up your person. That there's the world backing me on this. This is a red alert. This is a serious scenario. <laughs> you guys, uh, you that's that's a very harmful value to have in play, having this 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 idea that your belief structure represents yourself. Because when somebody argues your belief structure, you misinterpret it as them attacking you. 
And that's where cognitive dissonance comes from. That's the baseline program of it. That's what is distorting us. That's what is dividing us. That religion value, that belief structure value attached to your personal identity, yourself, your person, that is where cognitive dissonance comes from. And cognitive dissonance is the enemy. It is what is dividing us. Uh, our operator posted a video with Lady Gaga doing a little speech about about how hatred sneaks around dividing people and, and it works to divide us all and keep us divided into smaller groups so that it can overcome us. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely the case. This, this hatred, who knows where it came from, but we know that the cognitive dissonance that is causing the division complex came into play with religion. And so I'm, again, I'm sorry to religious people, but that is the case. It, it's, that, that program in and of itself is what is causing the world to essentially fail. We're, we're in trouble here. We, we don't even notice it. People don't notice it because they can't see the actual values in play. They only see the aspects that are attached. They only see the illusion. And, and we, you know, being a spotter, training other people to be a spotter, teaching people to see through the illusion. It's teaching people not only to see through that illusion, to see what's actually happening, to be able to read values and cues so that they can operate on, on a faster, sharper level, but also to take care of other people, to watch out for other people. That's what spotters do. We learn how to see through the illusions of life and we learn how to guide other people to see through it as well so that we can all work together and, and get on, on the same level, get on the same page and unite. Because it's division that is our ultimate enemy. That's what we are fighting here. That's what the initiative is fighting. This division complex and the cognitive dissonance that is backing that program. Another one. This. This is green. Uh, obviously this. And the other thing that I put up in the video. The other thing that I put up in the video was red. Red, red, red is telling your brain passion. Red's going to be telling your brain passion. It, it's speaking passion to you. It makes you passionate. In fact, just the color red itself. Unless you have other aspects attached to it, like you might have been hurt at some point. You might have been traumatized, and, and somehow the color red might have been involved. I mean, obviously, red is blood, so that's an easy that's an easy spot right there that that uh, red could easily be attached to trauma, and that's you know that's going to be a value that's in play for a lot of people. An aspect that might be in play when when dealing with, with certain people, but uh. For the most part, red, if it's untainted, if red is not distorted by an aspect like that attached to it, the color red essentially is telling your brain passion. And I, of course, I put that up there with some kind of a nail polish or something that the nail polish itself tells your brain cosmetics. You know, that, that speaking to your brain directly, that's saying cosmetic passion. And the green, the green is speaking growth. This is cosmetic in and of itself. This is a nail polish that I found, but the green color speaks to growth. It speaks to nature. It speaks to the growth of nature, essentially. That's what your brain identifies it as because throughout the entirety of our evolution, we've seen green growing everywhere. Green is the color of nature. Green is the color of growth. And so your brain automatically identifies that color as such. When attached to passion, cosmetics, and time, that should speak to your brain, essentially, that cosmetic alterations is a growth process, that that this, this cosmetic alteration, specifically speaking to the transgender community, as we were in that video, is saying that that is a growth, that is an evolution. Expressing yourself as such, taking control of that, making determined alterations to your own body, to your cosmetic values, and altering yourself in such a way as to take up a, a, a differing sex even, and to even be in a position where you are both sexes at once, and, and kind of essentially become thereby a third sex that is both united in a fusion, that's a growth. From my perspective, that's what I'm telling you because that's what I feel, that's what I think, that this is an evolution. That people doing this is, an, is a personal evolution, taking us to a new step in our ultimate evolution. Gender itself and sexuality is, of course, a catalyst event that we need to be dealing with. Because, as I said, there, there's certain values and aspects in play that will cause for transgender people to be uh, targeted and assaulted. And this obviously, this is already happening. But... What I can see from certain aspects of values that are in play regarding, specifically regarding the pornographic uh, 
whatever you want to call it, the pornographic arena or the pornographic uh, community. There are certain people that are doing some pretty tricky things to get to. And obviously, people watch pornography. I don't watch it often, but yes, I do watch it. And, you know, from time to time, it, I, I especially like uh, sexy dancing girls. That's something that I have kind of addiction to. I just, I love seeing girls dance uh, well, but it's difficult to find uh, videos where girls actually dance well. A lot of them kind of screw up and it's funny, but it's worth watching. But anyway, the point is most everybody in the world watches pornography and there's pornography in play, values placed into the pornographic clips that we see on shit like uh, U-porn or, or, you know, lube tube or whatever you call it there. I don't remember what the, the, the state or the sites are called, but there are certain people that are placing specific values in play into the pornographic field that is causing for your brain, that is actually directly causing for your brain to, to tell you to target transgender people as an enemy, as an offense. And we're going to get into that when we deal with the sexuality catalyst event, but I'm going to show you exactly what's happening. I'm going to try and explain it. It's going to be difficult to do because I can't actually post the pornographic videos for you to see, but I'm going to try my best to explain it to you and show you what's happening. But essentially, I guess that's it. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to cut it there because I don't really have much more to say right now. I'm in a hurry. Um, still in, in a heap load of trouble because my neighbor fucked me over, but, uh, I'm going to take care of it. I always do. Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I hope this was somewhat helpful. Think about it, put it into play, realize this. There are things everywhere in the world that are talking to your brain without you actually knowing it. But if you become aware, if you become lucid and see these values playing out, you can use it to your advantage. We're going to teach you specifically how to. I've been teaching you in the, the throughout the principal dynamics course. I've been giving you ideas as to how to do this, but we're going to get deep into it soon with the spot casting, uh, spot casting series here. So uh, thank you for watching. Hila Salai, Terve Unisiari, Namaste, my people. Love you all. Peace.